Let's turn our attention to the asymptomatic patient, the patient that is infected, is COVID positive, but is asymptomatic. I want to remind uh, everybody what I feel there are three stages of this disease we've termed yellow, orange, and red. In yellow, you have what I call stage one, where patients, in fact, are positive, infected, but without symptoms, don't even know sometimes that they're infected. And their job is to limit spread, and we'll get into that. That's their only job, is to limit the spread. On the other hand, patients have flu-like symptoms. They have muscle aches, some myalgia, a minimal cough, not greatly short of breath, and are what we call mild. And our job is to find ways to reduce their viral load so that they don't go from orange to red. And then finally, there are these patients who are in full-blown SARS, the elderly, the, the pre-existing conditions. And I think we have yet now a real challenge is to overcome the lung damage, reduce the fatality rate in these patients. So if we categorize or create these buckets, it gives us, as both scientists and medical scientists and clinicians, an opportunity to understand what I call the temporospatial nature of this disease and where in the spectrum of this disease we need to treat and what treatments to use. Obviously, at the end of the day, we want to find a vaccine to really prevent anybody from getting this infection. And it turns out that I believe 40 to 60 percent of the patients who are infected are asymptomatic. And 80 percent of patients are in this bucket of flu-like symptoms or asymptomatic. But the terror for all, for our loved ones, for the elderly, is that these patients in the stage three disease have such a high mortality rate that we need to find a way to even prevent this. What is most disconcerting is that while this started stage three, the red in the elderly, it's now moved in our country to some of the young. And then sadly, uh, even the youngest child has now suffered a death uh, as a result of full-blown SARS. So on that basis, I will now like to now start um, on trying to break up um, these categories and speak to each of these categories of the stages of COVID. And let's start now with the asymptomatic patient. I believe this is why we have this immense spread, because these are the, what I call the super spreaders. The patient being infected has no idea that they're infected. So they may have minor or have no idea. But I think this is the value of the stay-at-home policy. Until we can do all the tests, until we know who's infected or not infected, the only policy to provide containment and flatten this curve and not overwhelm the system is this self-isolation or stay-at-home policy. These patients, because they're infected, should truly be with face masks. So the purpose of testing now is to identify these patients who, sh who should self-isolate, who should use separate rooms and bathrooms, and as we've talked about in the past, wash their hands constantly. And this is what, this is also different with regard to this virus. It appears now from studies that the viral load in the respiratory system of patients who are asymptomatic can be as high as if they had symptoms. This video was taken at 2,000 frames a second from a healthy person during a violent uh, sneeze. And as you could see, uh, as the sneeze progresses, it goes 20 inches and then goes on to progress to 43 inches. And the remarkable nature of this is if it's taken then by a plume, what they call the physics of a gas plume, it could go as far as 20 feet. While this is unlikely that most sneezes go that long or far, as much as 26 feet, I think the point of this video is to say that within 26 feet of this infected person, surfaces can be contaminated, pavements, 
door handles, paper. This is why we need to understand that these patients who are asymptomatic in environments like this have the capability of spreading and in generating this pandemic. This uh, video, uh, taken again by another company, um, I, am, I can vouch for the veracity of where the data uh, comes from, other than uh, according to the reports of this company, it comes from mobile telephone data. But I think the point again here is at Fort Lauderdale, this is one single beach at spring break. A single beach at spring break in which potentially uh, these young people are asymptomatic, traveled, and you now you see their phone records in a very short space of time across the seaboard and the eastern seaboard of the United States and even up to the Midwest. On the other hand, if you took the approach as we've done now in California, and again credit to the governor and the mayor uh, of our towns, We've closed beaches. We've actually closed parks. We've banned gatherings. We've asked um, families to stay at home. For the first time, there are very little traffic. And credit to the community, they've actually accepted this because we are all in this together. This is the importance of us flattening the curve and causing an extinction of this virus. We have in our control the ability to cause an extinction of this virus by not giving it a host to survive. These young people at least are wearing masks. The idea that if you're infected and you wear a mask is not just to protect yourself, thinking you're not infected because you're asymptomatic, but to protect others from the droplets that can come from your sneezing or coughing. But I don't think it's very clear to most in the public that there's a very much difference in the mask you wear. If one were to look at this person's mask, you would see a great difference between this person's mask and the difference is this exhalation valve. What this means is that in this exhalation valve that is present in this person's mask, both N95s, is that the droplets can emerge from the exhalation valve. So the opportunity unfortunately completely defeats the purpose of this person protecting the rest of the community. So I would urge those who are infected and understand that they're infected that this is the mask they should be wearing and not an exhalation valve as has been attested by the CDC who have uh, shown that through these exhalation valves in order to maintain a sterile field, the exhalation valve itself does not protect that. And why is this all so important? Why am I emphasizing the importance of the responsibility of those that are asymptomatic and infected to stay at home, protect the others through appropriate wearing of the appropriate mask the fitted mass for medium, small, and large, is because of the healthcare workers. These are the professionals that are necessary and needed to treat even the, the moderately infected, but more importantly, those severely infected with a fatality rate of 50%. As can be seen from this Instagram and Twitter posts, um, here you have these professionals who are on the front line and they put their lives at risk to save all of us. And this statement says, we stayed at work for you, you stayed home for us. So I cannot emphasize more the importance of the young people understanding how difficult it must be that they are asymptomatic, feeling good, that it is their responsibility to stay at home, stay isolated. And unfortunately, the period of time while the median goes 14 days, there's evidence of 20 days, and even evidence of 30 days in which the virus stays within your body. So the longer you self-isolate, the better, so that we can protect the healthcare workers and protect the community and protect your loved ones.